Just over a month ago, I set out to run 5K every single day for 30 days. Now, I'm very much an all or nothing type of person. I knew that this challenge would either break me out of a rut with my running, or it would just straight up break me. You see, this might not come across on camera, but I'm a big guy, really big. I'm six foot six and about 265 pounds. That's 120 kilograms. In fact, I'm not totally sure how I've become the running guy here on YouTube, but here we are. Actually, just looking it up, I'm literally twice the size of some running YouTubers, like Seth James Damore, for example. Now, I'm not going to make this a boring day-by-day -day training vlog about the challenge. There are already plenty of those videos here on YouTube. Instead, I want to share some of the biggest things that I've learned along the process of completing this challenge. And yeah, spoiler alert, I did get the job done and I'm not injured. If you do want to check out the finer details of all the different runs, then please do feel free to head over to my Strava. I'll leave a link down in the description. Let's start with one of the biggest wins of the whole challenge, and then I'll dive deeper into how I did it. The main reason I wanted to run 5K every day for 30 days was to kickstart some momentum with my own training and get a feel for my base fitness. I wasn't totally sure how much I'd actually be able to improve my fitness in 30 days, but the data doesn't lie. The easiest way of seeing how my fitness did improve across those 30 days is to look at the average pace that I was running versus average heart rate in those early runs compared to the last runs of the challenge. Here inside Coros Training Hub, you can see that when I started running 5K in those early days, I averaged a pace of six minutes 13 per K, which is 10 minutes per mile, with an average heart rate of 137 beats per minute. And I finished the challenge on day 30, running 5K with an average pace of five minutes 36 per K, which is nine minutes per mile, and an average heart rate of 134 beats per minute. So definitely running faster for a lower heart rate. Of course, it would be really easy to explain the improvement away just by saying that I lost a bit of weight during the 30 days. But the hard fact of the matter is that I started at 120 kilos, which is 265 pounds, and finished the month at exactly the same weight. Now, don't get me wrong, I have a fair few pounds to lose to get back into my previous marathon shape, but this month has reinforced what I already know, that simply running is not going to be the answer when it comes to losing a bit of weight. Going forwards, I'm going to need to implement a few sustainable changes to my eating habits to put me in a state where I'm burning more energy than I'm consuming each day. Let's face it, running will get easier if I can lose 20 to 30 pounds. Now taking a positive from this second point, the improvement in pace for a given effort truly is an improvement of fitness not just simply me carrying around less weight as the 30 days progressed. But how can we really quantify this improvement in running fitness and make sure that I keep on seeing progress as I continue training? That's where this gets kind of interesting. In my last video, the one where I talk about how I set up my Coros watch for heart rate training, I mentioned training load as being one of the few metrics that I pay close attention to. Training load is a measure of intensity times duration and a single indicator of how much stress you're placing on your body, whether it's a long, easy run or an intense, short workout. Now, in Coros Evo Lab, one of the most important metrics to monitor is your base fitness, which is simply a 42-day rolling average of your training load. If you're running at a training load above your current base fitness, your fitness will increase. And if you're below it, you're either maintaining or you're detraining. So looking at my base fitness graph right now, I know that I need to be getting out and producing a training load of a little over 75 with each run this week to keep my base fitness gently climbing. Of course, if I suddenly spike my training load and do so too frequently, that's where I'm pushing my body too hard and beginning to open myself up to more injury risk. That's where we can start to monitor intensity trend but that's a conversation for another day. Running every day is not something that I want to continue as I know that my body needs more recovery time between runs as they get longer and as the training load gets more substantial. But there is a certain lesson that I've learned through running every day. It's far more mental than all this data crunching and it's truly transformational. 
This isn't rocket science, but it's one of the most profound things that I've taken away from any run streak I've ever done in the past. And it's been on my mind for this one too. I found that being committed to the challenge of running every day changes the conversations I have with myself about how I manage my time. Simply put, it changes the conversation from, am I gonna have time to go and run today? To how am I gonna find time to run today? It's a subtle difference, but it really makes me think about the day differently. Running becomes non-negotiable. In doing so, I'm prioritizing myself, my health, and my fitness, if I'm honest, for the first time since becoming a father almost two years ago. Granted, it meant that more than once in this challenge, I had to go out at 11 p.m. and start my 5K, but I got the job done. A to-do task that would have been dropped as soon as the day got hard in months gone by. Of course, there is another important reason why my out of shape 265 pound frame stood up to the challenge of running 5K every day, and I've come out the other side uninjured. It's simple, but boy is it effective. I'm talking about the 20 minute at home strength and injury prevention workouts I've been doing since June when the Bulletproof Runners program launched. Staying on top of regular exercises for my glutes, core and other key muscle groups has put me in a prime position to be able to hop into a challenge like this and not break down as soon as the training load started to build up. If you're about to embark on a new training block, as I know so many of us are with marathon training season just around the corner, I can't stress enough now how important it is for you to get into good habits with this type of work. And that, of course, leads me into the next question of what next for my running? Well, marathon training. 